Okay, this sermon is entitled, Mike Winger, The Illogical Unsaved Devil Exposed. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 128 reads, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Now Mike Winger is nothing but a false prophet. He has a YouTube channel entitled Mike Winger. And somebody sent me this video entitled, When to be scared you're not a genuine Christian. So let's take a listen to what he has to say, and then I'm going to expose him as the unsaved devil that he is. Here goes. I know there's warnings towards them. I know there's warnings towards them. Hey, if you're living these lifestyles, you're, you're not going to inherit the kingdom. Now what he's doing is he's going into Ephesians chapter 5, and he's examining verses 5 and 6. And there are two ways to understand this concept of inheriting the kingdom of God. One is that it means to go to heaven. The other is where it means that when you inherit the kingdom, that's synonymous with reigning with Christ, and that's a rewards issue. But I believe that Paul is addressing people that are not even saved at all. And because they're unbelievers, they are named after their sins. And that's why we have an entire list here. Unclean people, idolaters, whoremongers, foolish, people that are filthy, people that jest, and the list goes on. And the way this unsaved false prophet Mike Winger understands this is that if you commit certain sins, then you're not going to heaven. So let's keep listening to him. Here goes. But how do I know how much sin is so much where I go, you're clearly not saved? Well, this is a stupid question because it only takes one sin to be lost if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ. So the amount of sin does not determine anything. And why would you look to sin anyway as a fruit inspector to ascertain somebody's salvific status when Jesus Christ paid for all sins? Let's keep listening. Here goes. Now, am I saying that your, your sin made you unsaved? No, I'm saying your sin reveals that your claim to believe in Jesus is not genuine. You don't have real faith. So what he's saying is that you don't really believe something if you're living in sin. Now, ultimately, what his problem is, is that he hasn't trusted Jesus Christ to pay for sins. That's why sin is still the issue, the focal point, and what he's putting the emphasis on. Now, the reason why I've called him illogical is because how a person lives, or what a person does, physically or in the flesh, has nothing to do with what a person believes. This is about as stupid as saying, I claim I believe that Franklin D. Roosevelt was the 32nd president of the United States, but that's not a real belief because I was outside kicking a can or beating a stick with a golf club or smoking a cigarette or something. It doesn't make any sense at all. A person's sins don't determine whether or not they believe something because belief is something that takes place at a nanosecond in time. Once you believe on Christ, you're saved forevermore. And salvation is an event. It's not some process that's contingent upon a person's lifestyle. So all we have here is an unsaved devil, Mike Winger, who's not trusting Jesus Christ for his salvation. Ultimately, he's trusting in himself and how he lives. And he's a fruit inspector who's pointing the finger at people, declaring them unsaved because they have sin in their life. Well, he needs to look in the mirror and see himself as the stupid, unsaved, sinful hypocrite that he is. And he needs to repent of this foolish work salvation and actually get saved. But until he does, I'm going to expose him as the unsaved, illogical devil that he is. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.